Hey, welcome to Dan's Bottle Works. And of course, we're in the world famous headquarters of Dan's Model Works, the Clutter Zone. And this is part five of the mighty MI 10. And this should be the conclusion, unless I totally bugger it up, and then you'll never see this again. Let's get the box out of the way. So, the MI 10 now featuring correct green wheels. And if you didn't see the uh, comment that I believe Scale 144 made, or the bit in the description, the last episode I had these painted red, which was awesome because it was a welcome splash of color. But what happened, so far as I can tell, was is uh, all along I was thinking green wheels. Because the Soviets seem to have this thing with green wheels. So that was my intention all along was green wheels. And then right before I went to paint them green, I was like, I better double check that. And I must have been distracted or something or other. And I quickly had looked at the color key here. And I saw F. And then I quickly went down. And instead of looking at F, which really says medium green, I saw the red. They're right beside each other, but really an E and an F. I don't know. Medville School for the Gifted or something. I don't know. At any rate, my brain said, hey, red. And I was so excited about being able to paint something red on this and giving a nice splash of color. I just didn't double check, which I guess is a new adage. Check twice, paint once, as opposed to painting twice. So they are now painted green. And yes, it was far more of a challenge to paint them on the model than separately. So off camera, I've given these things a coat of Humbrol 1, as I check here because I can't remember, Humbrol 147, light gray, and yes, I double and triple checked it. It still has to have um, a little black bit painted on right there. And I don't believe, nope, there's no colored tips on this. But when you figure how high these rotor blades are off the ground, I don't think they're worried about someone like lopping their head off of them. So I will be trimming these off and touching up the areas where the sprue was connected. And you can see that they give you one on a separate sprue, and then they give you two of these sprues here. The main rotors have a black strip for half of the leading edge. Maybe I better check that again. Uh, C, C, Humbrol 33, black. Okay, yes. So the leading edge is supposed to be black. Now I'm, now I'm deading myself all the time. Oh, well, check twice, paint once. So actually it just says black. It doesn't say flat black. So you know what? I think I'm actually going to use a semi-gloss black. And I've already, as you can see here, masked. And hopefully I won't get any leakage underneath, because then I'd cry. Sorry, no blow-by-blow blow account of assembling our massive rotor head here. You can see how large it is compared to my hand. But suffice it to say that there was, I think, something like 12 parts that all had to be aligned simultaneously. And at least one part went astray, and the carpet monster got it. But it's together, and it does seem to be relatively strong. It does still need to be painted. I'm probably just going to brush paint it because I've already airbrushed my blades themselves. And you can see I've got the, the semi-gloss black strips on there. So it's not the worst rotor head I've ever dealt with. Actually, I'd have to say it's probably in the upper half in terms of strength and durability. So let's see if we don't snap anything off it. What was I saying about no lost parts? This little doodad here, and I'm not exactly sure what it is officially called, but I know what it does. It changes the pitch of the tail rotor blades, and this changes the amount of uh, thrust it provides for counteracting torque. At any rate, it's a little cross thingy, and I dropped mine on the floor. So, you know, now that I've made another one, as well as the little rods that go to the 
to the tail rotor blades, I'll find the real one a week from now. But at least I've got it put back together again. So it's uh, Monday, April 30th, and you're looking at the sprue with all the various grab handles and things on it. I'm in the middle of putting these things on. I thought I was going to have this thing done and posted yesterday. But all these little handrails definitely are slowing me down. And part of the problem, if we can get a good focus on them here, is wherever you separate them from the sprue, of course, you've got to clean that up. That's a major challenge. So I've been doing a little bit a day and just taking it easy. You can see some of them here and there and there. And yeah, they're a, they're a pain to put on, that's for sure. All right, all of the grab irons are on, I think. The uh, back quarter of this one snapped off and went flying, so... I didn't worry too much about that. That's mostly going to be covered by the rotor head. So the next step is the, the antennas that come above the windscreen and down here. There's some antenna mounts and then there's a wire that goes between them. Okay, I think I've got all of the various antennas and struts and handrails and things on. I'm sure there's some I've lost. I'm sure there's some I've missed. But now I can finally touch up everything to the same gray, touch up all the silvers. And a plethora of other touch-ups that need to be done. But yeah, these ones were certainly... Actually, these ones were a lot easier to do than you'd think. It's surprising how easy they did go on. So now we will, like I said, get to touching things up. All right, this wasn't the technique I was going to use to do my antennas. I was going to use Lycra, but I don't know, I guess I didn't pay tribute to the Lycra God lately. And that wasn't cooperating. So I used the age-old trick of stretched sprue. So I stretched some sprue until I had some really nice thin strips here. And I glued them in place. A little bit of super glue to either end. Now there was a little bit of droop. So I've never actually tried this technique. Apparently that if you do have stretched sprue for an antenna or something, once you have it in place... If you heat it with a soldering iron, it will spring nice and tight. And it did. So there you go. That's a process that does in fact work. So I'm just debating whether I'm going to paint it black or whether I'm going to paint it silver. But there's those antennas in place. Probably a little bit more fragile using stretch sprue than if I use Lycra, but we'll see. Okay, getting down to the final little bits and bobs of final assembly. Although I have to say, I I thought the, the rotors are going to be a little more impressive than this. Maybe I better check those instructions again. And it is done. At least I think it's done. I'm probably going to find a couple things that aren't done on it. But I'm calling it done for now. So... I've got it sitting on my little spinny show it off thingy and it uh, <laughs> it's kind of pointless because it's so big that something usually manages to smash into the backdrop right there. So I will zoom in it a little closer but you can see here is the whole shebang and still looks like a big stick. Very dragonflyish actually. So we can spin it all the way to here and then bad things will happen. So, you know what? This wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I did have a few fit issues with the, uh, basically the, the underside. It created that step that I needed to use a lot of filler for. 
as well right here and here uh, that required a fair amount of filler and I'm not really happy with and it was one of these things where it looked fine initially and then once I got farther along into it I was like you know I probably could have spent a few more minutes polishing that area out one thing that I flip-flopped on is I thought the pannier was going to go on really easily because I thought it had a far more uh, positive connection to the landing gear. And then when I saw just how precarious it was, I was thinking, well, this isn't going to work. And amazingly enough, that was probably one of the most trouble-free things I did was attaching the pannier to the bottom. These antennas, and you'll see them when I zoom in a little bit more, uh, I thought those are going to be difficult. They were actually weren't too bad. The rotor head uh, was fairly trouble-free. I've said before, rotor heads on helicopters can be problematic. What's interesting is, is how long the axle is, the drive shaft that goes up. This is really long, which is fine because on a large helicopter, I prefer having the the main rotors be removable in case I've got to store it or in case I have to transport it any distance. It just makes the whole package a lot less cumbersome. So I pretty much kept the weathering to the pannier had a fair amount of weathering and I did the panel lines. Uh, that was about it. I was tempted to do a little bit of soot behind the main exhausts sometimes you see that on large helicopters sometimes you don't i don't know if it's a fuel quality issue or not i hadn't seen any pictures of these with a lot of soot behind the main exhausts so i decided not to go with that here's a lower down shot and you can see i've got a a year old tanker truck here i think this was icm and I actually bought and built that to put next to my MI-26, and we're going to bring it out in a few minutes here. But uh, this guy actually does fit on the pannier, but I'm not 100% sure that this truck is liftable by this helicopter. This helicopter can lift approximately 10 tons. I don't know offhand how much a euro weighs. It wouldn't surprise me if it weighs more than 10 tons. So I don't want to put it on there and have somebody say, you can't carry that with. So I left it off for now. And if we move in right here, this window here behind the cockpit was one of the windows that disappeared inside the model. And you can see that it now actually has glass in there. That was the tester's window maker which I've had sitting around for years, but had never got around to using, and it worked really quite well. And we'll zoop around the other side here. And this window, which is not a bulged out window, that as well as the other window that I replaced with the tester's window maker. And that actually, it, it, the product worked quite well. I'm probably gonna use it again. You can see the pannier is definitely quite a bit more down at the heels than the rest of the helicopter. I kind of visualized that that might be, you know, sitting off in a corner a lot more, uh, not being used as much as the helicopter itself. I think the pannier was one of these things. I thought it was going to be a, an awesome idea. And then it, they decided it was a hell of a lot more practical, just wrap some cables onto whatever they're picking it up and haul it that way which is pretty much what all heavy lift helicopters do today. Very seldom do they try to either put it inside or, uh, you know, carry it on a pannier. I mean, that pannier is probably going to be two or three tons as well, even if it's made out of aluminum. So here's a close-up of all that antenna stuff going on in here in the front. Now, what they do with the antennas for the short leg version, I don't know, because, I mean, this is, this is one heck of a long antenna on both sides. Here you can see the rotor head. The rotor head was given some panel wash, and I think that brought out a lot of the details really good. The 
really for you know what's known as a limited run kit from a manufacturer that uh, you know isn't mainstream this kit really did go together quite well very few fit issues and the few fit issues there were were probably due to me gluing something in slightly the wrong spot this is a shot I know that some of you have been waiting for that is the MI-26 next to the MI-10. And you can see the difference here. The MI-10 is actually, in terms of overall footprint, a larger helicopter. Although the MI-26 is a higher net weight, uh, certainly a higher gross weight. I think in terms of overall capacity, in terms of dead lifting, the MI-26 can do more than 20 tons, whereas the MI-10 is somewhere around the order of 10 tons but when you consider how many more blades and how much more power the mi-26 has that probably gives it to you right there but uh the mi-26 i never did a a, a, a video on it because i built that many years ago other than the windscreen it was almost 100 percent trouble free assembly the MI-10, it really, given that it was not from as mainstream a manufacturer, like I said, it went together pretty damn well. There was very few problems. But you can see the these two big boys here. They certainly certainly take up the whole workbench. Ever wonder what the difference between the rotor assembly of an MI-26 and the MI-10 is, here you go. So as you can see, I've got it almost exactly in the center. In terms of rotor diameter, the MI-10 is a larger diameter, and the blades are eh, slightly broader. The big difference is, of course, is the MI-26 has eight rotor blades. I think that is the most rotor blades on any production helicopter versus the five rotor blades that the MI-10 has. So you certainly know where the far increased power in the MI-26 goes. Okay, one final fun shot here, just to once again put things into perspective. Uh, of course, we've got the MI-10, then we get the MI-26, we got the MI-4, We've got a Huey, we've got a Bell Model 47 down here, and we've got a Kamov, I uh, can't remember its actual designation, it's the earlier smaller one, their ASW helicopter, just to give you some idea of sizes, and I know somebody's going to say, well, why don't you have a, why don't you have a Sea Stallion in there? Yeah, I have a Sea Stallion. It just, it wasn't going to fit. <laughs> Suffice it to say that when you put the Sea Stallion next to either the MI-26 or the MI-10, it, it doesn't look so big. It's a really big helicopter, but when you put it next to one of these mammoth ones, it just kind of, kind of, just kind of shrinks. Just right now I'm thinking of them trying to start up all them engines simultaneously. Think of the carnage. So, that does it for our MI-10 build by A model, and now I have to find a place to display it because my shelf was already full. And thanks for watching, and keep on modeling, and a weight lack of progress report will follow.